right. Welcome to our live stream today. Let's go ahead and take our Bibles and we will turn to Genesis chapter 25. Genesis 25. Genesis 25. It is pretty toasty out there. I think it's supposed to, is it supposed to cool down sometime in the future? Yeah, two months in the night. Yeah, I know. I walked outside and I was like, it was, <laughs> it was uh, in the morning a little while back and it was 89 or 91. It was like, this is nice, you know. I know, walking out. And then you're pouring sweat. Oh, man. All right, so Genesis chapter 25. We're going to look at a couple of things here through the end of this chapter, just a couple of principles that we see in the Bible here. So Genesis chapter 25 and verse 23. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb, and the first came out red, all over like a hairy garment. And they called his name Esau, which means red. It's very interesting. And after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold of Esau's heel, and his name was called Jacob. And Esau was threescore years old when she bare them. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for the ability, um, Lord, to get out, the, the health to get out and come and be in your house. Father, we thank you for the freedom to do that as well. We know so many other places across this globe, people do not have um, this type of freedom. Father, even north of us, our neighbors up in Canada, Lord, are persecuted. I pray for them, each and every one. Father, I pray that you'll give them courage and strength during these times. I pray that good people will step up and do something. Father, I pray you'll be with us during this time. Those people who are out traveling on vacation or at camps, Father, I pray for our pastor that you'll be with him greatly as he's away uh, speaking at camp this week and others, Lord, who are out of town. We thank you for this day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, so see, here we see Esau and we see Jacob. And in nature, these boys were completely opposite. Now, if you have a sibling... You know, we know how opposites sometimes happen in family, which is really incredible that you can have two people born of the same mother and be completely different, <laughs> you know, especially when you have a large family, you see all the, the different opposite ones. It's just, it's crazy. Or if you see, you'll see people who are born of the same mother and father, and they'll go off and do completely opposite things with their lives. Totally different. And um, it's always, never ceases to amaze me. And then you look at that spiritually, and the people who've sat under the preaching of God's word who go off and do whatever they want to. It's just, it's incredible how that is. And that just points to people's decisions that they have to make. They can only do so much, and then they have decisions that, uh, that falls on them. So in nature, these boys are completely opposite of each other, and we see that. And that's such the way with family members here. So one loved to hunt that we see coming up here, and the other one was more of a homeboy. So look in verse 27. And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning warrior, or a cunning hunter, a man of the field, and Jacob was a plain man dwelling in the tents. Now, it doesn't say Jacob was a wimp, and it doesn't say he was this. I have always sort of pictured him as this scrawny dude that never wanted to do anything. But it never, we don't get an indication here, starting out, that he was lazy. He was a plain man. And he, he, his dwelling was in the tent. He worked there. He did, he, obviously, he was a good cook, as we can see coming up here. Um, but it's, I, all, you always sort of think of Esau being the bigger, stronger. Yes, you can see that because the Bible talks about it. But it doesn't mean that Isaac was this scrawny little um, guy. So we see here in verse 28, this is very, very important. And Isaac loved Esau. This is very interesting what it says here. Because... He did eat of his venison, but Rebekah loved Jacob. It's not very interesting to me because I always thought, well, he just, it's the preference, you know, someone has their favorite uh, child, I guess, especially during this day. And 
Isaac likes Esau because he was more of the macho type guy. But the Bible tells us he loved him because he did eat of his venison. So Esau reigned supreme over Isaac's affections by the simple process of pandering to his appetites. We look at Jacob. He reigned over Rebekah's heart simply by being himself. And this is just a side note here. Let's turn to John chapter 21. John chapter 21. So Esau reigned over Isaac's affections by pandering to his appetite. Jacob reigned over Rebekah's heart simply by being himself. Isaac loved Esau because of what Esau did to him. According to the scripture, Isaac loved Esau because of what Esau did for him. Rebekah, according to the scripture, loved Jacob for who he was because there's no caveat with Rebekah loving Jacob there. We see that in verse 28. Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison. But Rebekah loved Jacob, and then it ends there. I thought that was very interesting as I was studying for this. So as a side note, we turn to John chapter 21 and verse 15. Jesus is talking here. So when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, Lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. He saith unto him again the second time, Simon son, of jo Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. And he saith unto him, Feed my sheep. Verse 17, he saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he had said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said unto him, Feed my sheep. So Jesus, it's interesting, he asked him here, do you love me? Lovest thou me? A simple question he's asking, and he's making a point here, but it's very interesting that he didn't say, do you love me because of all the things I've done to, for you? Do you love me because of the miracles that I've performed? Do you love me because of what I have given you? Jesus doesn't say that. He just says, do you love me? And it's very interesting when we look at Esau here, and he loves his son for one reason, Rebecca loves him, her son, uh, her other son, for another reason. Peter was asking, uh, uh, Christ was asking Peter if he loved him because of who he was. Shortly after that exchange, Christ would die on the cross for Peter and for all of mankind, not because of what Peter had done for him, but because of who Peter was. So, Lord, help us to never have conditional love towards one another, especially towards our children and our family. As men, we're supposed to be very, very uh, uh, careful about not making sure our love is not conditional to those around us. Just because someone pleases us, then we love them, then we show them favor. It shouldn't be like that. Our love should be unconditional. Jacob had selfish love, and it was condi uh, conditional. Rebecca here had pure love, and it was unconditional. Let's turn back to where we were in Genesis. Genesis chapter 25. 25, Genesis and we're going to go to verse 29. We continue with our story here, and we get this good look at um, Esau and then at Jacob and then how their parents felt about them. In verse 29, And Jacob sawed pottage. And Esau came from the field, and he was faint. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint, it was probably chilly, uh, wherefore uh, was his name called Edom? which also means red. So we can call him, he's red, red, and he wanted the red pottage. So there we go. The red, it's probably chili because it had lentils in it. So he's out, excuse me, <clears throat> and he's eating, uh, he's out hunting, and now he's hungry. And we've all been hunting here before, and we know how hungry it makes you. I went out with a friend of mine one time, and he could, he was like a mountain goat. He could walk and walk and walk and walk, and he took those small steps, no big steps. This is really small little step. And we were out, and I packed, I was prepared. I packed like three sandwiches and a bunch of other stuff. All this stuff I had pouted in. I was ready uh, to just tear into this food because I knew I'd be hungry. We get to the top of this mountain. We've been out there since 4.30 in the morning. We stop at 11 o'clock. So I'm like, okay, finally I sit down. I inhale all of my food. He has this little protein cookie, and he was like, oh, man, you can have my food. And I was like, crazy okay I'll take it you know so I take it eat all of his food he had this little thing by the time we got back down 
we got out of there late. Um, the sun was coming down, and it was hours and hours later. I was so hungry, but I'd eaten everything that I had. Who knows what I consumed. When we got back into town, uh, everything was closed by then, so we like stopped at a Jiffy store, and then I <laughs> got a bunch of good stuff, bunch, moon pies, good healthy stuff like moon pies and all that. So I'm wolfing all that stuff down, and he had just a little bit, and I could not believe that he was not eating more than he was. Another thing that happened was, is, this is a side note, we ran out of water, which is not the thing you want to do. And Ron knows you don't just drink from a stream because you might just go around the corner and there might be a dead cow laying there. I remember that story. So you, you don't. Yes, I know. It's all good. It gives you protein in the water. Yes, makes you strong, gives you character. So we were all out of water, and I open up. We had a we uh, had the plastic bags. We had the food in, and it was in the ice cooler. But there was one that was in a uh, a paper bag, and we had taken that out. Well, that paper bag had disintegrated into fibers, so it was fibrous water, and I was so thirsty that I drank that water. I was like so. I was so parched. So I drank some of it to tide me over. That wasn't the worst part. The worst part was we were driving down the road, and he asked me, he said, is that water okay? I said, well, it really wasn't that bad. He said, okay. He said, well, I cleaned out the cooler real good. I said, you cleaned out the cooler? What was in the cooler? He said, I had shot a antelope last week, but I bleached it out real good. That's what he'd hauled it home in. Didn't tell me as I'm drinking this anyways. So, yes, I thought I'm going to die, but I didn't die once again. Makes you stronger. But I don't recommend drinking a paper bag because that's not very good. Anyways, so Esau here is very hungry. He comes back from hunting. He wants nourishment. And oftentimes we need something right now, um, but we really don't need it right now. And we're in the now society. You can even take your, your debit card and you can just tap the thing and it makes a little noise and then it pulls it straight from there. I have uh, Apple Pay on my phone and I had to buy something. Um online and it said you want to use Apple Pay and I was like sure so it came up on my computer double click on your phone and it already has my shipping address and all in the phone and I just double clicked on the computer and it was all ready to go so people are used to that now I want it right now society some kids we see in Walmart want it right now they have to have something um, I used to always think you know what if someone would just Snatch that young and up because they are, they're screaming, they're yelling, they're going crazy in Walmart. You know, that, that, that would take care of them. And then fast forward years later when I had my own kids, and they're perfectly fine until we're in the checkout line of Walmart, and then they're going bonkers. And I can see people like, they're thinking, if he just snatched those kids up, you know. And it's like this vicious cycle that takes place. So anyways, it's, <laughs> it's all classic. So we live in a now society. Sometimes, though, we're willing to pay dearly for that. Let's look in verse 31. And Jacob said, sell me this day thy birthright. Okay, sell me this day thy birthright. We're in Genesis chapter 25 and verse 31. Sell me this day thy birthright. What is a birthright? A birthright is an inheritance that the father hands down to the firstborn son only. And in this case, it meant much more than just a vast quantity of land and livestock. Let's, turn, let's keep our finger there and let's turn to Genesis chapter 12 real quick. Genesis chapter 12, and we'll keep our finger in verse in chapter 25. So what it was is it was a blessing from God. And this is very, very important to remember because the consequences from this, it's not just physical. Um, it's also spiritual as well. And we see that. Genesis chapter 12 and verse 1. Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, or, or to Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, into a land that I will show thee, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So, he's offering him something for a very, very special blessing. And this isn't unusual to have temptations like this in our own life, but we have to remember that these type of things are never worth it. Now Esau changes his tone here whenever things don't go his way. Let's look in verse 32 again uh, 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 for the first time here. And Esau said, Behold, I am at the point to die. 
And what profit shall this birthright do me? So now he's questioning what um, uh, the Lord had given him. Esau was faint. We see that. The Bible says that. Yet at the first sign of pressure, he was going to die. So he elevates his situation to something more dire than it was. Uh, and it's very, very important to be careful about making grandiose absolute statements. The you never, I would never. Well, you know what? You always, I always, that type of stuff. It's like, okay, here we go. Especially if you get known, if you, if you have the reputation of going overboard with that. It's like, okay, here we go. You got to go through the whole spiel of this long the process of grandiose statements. We don't want to be known for that. So he said, I'm going to die. He, we know he was just going to faint, but now he says, I'm going to die. And things can always be worse. You know, that's one thing to remember. We can, we can try to elevate our situation, but things are always worse. Stories of uh, 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 dad tells about people, uh, women over in India, who travel to church every single day. I think it's one way, it's 12 miles, and they're beaten by their village every single Sunday that they get back, it's just brutal. So we can, we can make our situation uh, sound a lot worse than it actually is, but there are other people out there who are actually living in those type of um, uh, circumstances. So let's look in verse 32 again. We're going to look at the second part. So he says, And what profit shall this birthright do to me? So now what he does is he questions what is certain. And that's one thing about sin. Whenever you give yourself over to sin, or you give yourself over to a lust, or a desire, or something that you want more than anything else, you will make any excuse in the world to get that. And you'll convince yourself. How many times has peop have people looked at something, a financial decision, and said, you know, I really, really like that. I, you know what, I think, man, when I get the money saved up, I'm going to get that. And then give it two weeks, and it's turned into, I need that. That's what I really need. We've given ourselves, you know what, I can, I, not that I, I just want it, I can, for the future, yes, I need that. That's a necessity, you know, and then we turn that around. Um, so he needed his birthright, but he wanted the pottage, and we have to be careful not to put our wants above our needs, and obviously our needs is, uh, the, the first and foremost is relationship with God. It doesn't matter how bad we need Christ in our life, it matters how much we want him in our life. And if we do not want Christ's direction, he's not going to give us that direction. And we know from working with young people, you, you find out in life that people who don't want to be helped won't be helped. You know, that's the first, that's one of the first things um, that you start to learn as you, as you grow older is that you can try to help people but people that don't want to be helped, they're not going to be um, helped. They're going to keep doing the same thing over and over and over again. So oftentimes Christians believe that we can do our own thing, and maybe while doing so we'll stumble across God's will. You know, we're going to, we're going to find happiness. None of that um, is the case at all. We know what is certain. We have to be careful not to give that away, that certainty away. Let's look at verse, uh, uh, yeah, verse 33. <coughs> Excuse me. And Jacob said, Swear to me this day, and he swear unto him, <clears throat> and he sold his birthright unto Jacob. Now, I used to think back in the day, he stole his birthright. You know, he tricked him out of that stuff. But when you think about it, he didn't trick him. He just offered him, he said, you want it? Okay, sell me your birthright. He wanted Esau's birthright more than Esau wanted his birthright. And there's nothing wrong with Jacob going, if you don't, if it's not important to you, I'll take it. If, if this is what's important to you, I'll sell it to you and I'll take what you don't want. And it goes to show, too, we have to be real careful about this, because it goes to show that if, we're, if we don't watch ourselves, what will happen is, is we will um, become servants or servitude toward things that we desire. And you can, I mean, you look at that with uh, addictions, alcohol, drugs, different stuff like that. Someone's something they desire so much, they begin to serve it after a while. Someone who is so into um, um, money, uh, their job situation, their status, you start to serve that over time. And we have to be careful uh, not to do that. So <laughs> Esau, uh, he was so accustomed to getting what he wanted 
and he saw that and he wanted it and he was not going to be deterred from what he wanted even at the price of his um, of the uh, of the birthright which is just incredible when you think about it, it's bean soup the guy gives it away for bread and lentil soup that's incredible and we look at that and go I cannot believe I cannot believe he would do that but we're standing on the outside looking in. Jacob's probably saying the same thing, going, is he going to do this, really? And then he's going he's to go back on this, swear unto me, make it so, you know. that. So that is like, did this really just happen, you know? But for him, he wanted what he wanted right now, and he was not going to be denied, so he was willing to give something away. He questioned what was certain, um, and he couldn't be helped um, from that, which is, which is sad. His birthright was worth more. His, worth, his birthright was worth no more than some bread and some bean soup. And you think about that, how fast does it take to eat a loaf of bread and the bean soup? You know, you're talking about not just a life, not just a lifetime of blessings from this birthright, but you're talking about generational blessings from this birthright. So never in the Bible, uh, you know, t with, in this book here, do you really see a worse trade? I mean, there's articles on the worst trades in NFL history, you know, NBA history. They didn't get what they bartered for with this. This is certainly a horrible, horrible trade, and he probably wolfed that down very quickly. And it shows, for him, he was probably thinking, nope, I need this right now. He had convinced himself he needed it right now. It was a lust of his appetite. He had to have it right now and then it affected his generations to come. So we have to be careful and remember that what we do, even if it's just momentarily, it does have an impact. There is a ripple effect on generations after us, and we see that over and over and over again with broken homes and people that give in to their desires. Uh, it affects generations after them. So Esau got caught up in the moment, and he sold a permanent blessing for a temporary want. Let's look in verse 34. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils, and he did eat and drink, and rose up and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. The blessing that he had, he despised it. And it is incredible, incredible to me how um, people who are in the world how many of them hate the things of God. People who leave, I, I know people who have godly parents, they have left those godly parents who were born uh, 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 and raised in a wonderful church and who hate that wonderful church, you know, and it's like this, there's this resentment, I'm not just going to leave, but I'm going to resent, and they're there to help them, and it goes to show that whenever you get caught up in that, what, the, your own lust, your own desires, that it'll turn you against the things that are there to actually help you. The blessing was his birthright, and he ended up despising the blessing that God was giving him, so he gave it away. So we see here that Esau got what he wanted, but he eventually he lost what he had. So he got what he desired, but now he lost the blessing that God had given him. Let's turn to Isaiah chapter 40 real quick. He got what he wanted, but he lost what he had. Esau, after his satisfaction was met, realized that he had paid more than he wanted to pay. And I'm sure he probably regretted that. And I'm sure that we've all made mistakes too, things that we've regretted. But this is something that wasn't a, a flippant mistake that he had made. This was a mistake this was a problem with his heart. Um, so he realized after his satisfaction was met that he had paid more than what he wanted to pay. Something of the world that cost everything isn't worth anything. Something that's going to cost you everything in your life isn't worth anything. And it's important. Uh, it's the, it's the, the old sales tactic. You have to decide right now. Right now, we got this thing, you got, you got to make a choice. One thing that, that dad would always do, if anyone ever pressured him to do something, a car or something like that, it was walk away, walk away. And 
that drives me crazy. Pressure salesmen. One time I made the horrible mistake. I, okay, Carissa said yes, but then I should have said no. Um, these people said, we'll come in and we'll vacuum, we'll vacuum your front room for free. It'll just be a really quick second. You've all probably heard that before. So she said, yeah, that's great. So it was on Wednesday, and I'm there. Uh, jail's a little baby, and I'm getting stuff ready. Nabo's sitting there eating, and um, this guy comes in, and he was with the Kirby vacuum. Not with Kirby vacuum, but some distributor, I guess. Anyways, took us three hours to get him out. Um, now I would have, he would have been put out much faster probably, but it was one of those things to where he's coming in and you have to make a decision right now, right now. Nope, it can't be. You have to say yes, right now. Well, we got this wonderful deal. You know what we're going to do? We're going to call, I'm going to call up the head of the company, the CEO. You know what? Oh my goodness, sir. And literally he's standing over there in the corner of my living room. Sir, okay, we've never given that type of deal before, sir. Are you sure? Okay, whatever you say, we're not going to make any money on it. And I'm sitting there thinking, you've got to be the brain, the brain cells are falling out of my ears. Meanwhile, mentally, <laughs> yes, <laughs> do I still like my Kirby? I love it. It's such a wonderful investment, you know, just the price of a car. So we had actually had a brand new Dyson, and the guy told us it was a glorified pencil sharpener. So, because you could, I guess, put a pencil in there and it would spin it. I have no idea. Now, like, no, I think I'll keep the, the Dyson vacuum. And if I ever thought about getting a Kirby, now I'm not going to get it. So he, um, all that stuff's going on mentally while I'm kicking myself for getting into this situation. Anyway, he's got off on a rabbit trail there. Um, so that's one of those things where you're pressured into something. And whenever the world will want an answer right now, right now, right now. And that's why we see in the multitude of counselors there's safety. If Esau had said, no, or let me think about it a minute, but he was in dire straits, he was distressed, and he was frantic, and he had to have an answer right away, and with life, that's not, that's not normal, that's not life, and you can't expect an answer right off the bat. Well, Jacob knew what he was doing because he knew that Esau was prone to that type of stuff, probably very rash, made quick decisions, so he capitalized on that, but Esau here, it probably took him five minutes to finish that bowl and that represented what he the the um the that appetite that he had him consuming that represented all that he had given away and it's just i mean it's something that's so common bean soup and bread and now it's gone and you've just giving away you've just given away the blessings of god so we cannot put a price on the blessings of god you cannot put a price on your family. We you cannot put a price on what God has given you. You can't put a price on your church. You can't put a price on the, the, uh, your walk with the Lord. And it's not just blessings that you can see. A lot of times it's blessings we don't even know about that God has blessed us along the way and opened doors that we weren't uh, sure of. But we can't put a price on that. So don't be willing to give that up. Nothing is worth giving up that walk with the Lord. Now, we may not give away what we have. Uh, 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 may we not give away what we have no matter what Satan offers us in return. No matter what it is, no matter how frantic we are, no matter how desperate we are, we have to stop and seek counsel. I was talking to someone recently about that, about um, seeking counsel. In the multitude of counselors, there is safety. The reason why God gives us counselors is because they're in a situation to where they are not, they don't have the burden of what you're carrying. So they can see, they can see from a different angle what you're going through, and then they have, okay, this is what I see from this situation. But a lot of times when you're walking a path and you're carrying this burden, this burden, this burden, this burden, and you can't see over what you're doing, that's why counselors are so vital because you have someone who comes in and goes, you're dealing with all of this stuff, and let me help you sort of see through some of that, and I can tell you where you're going. Our ministry at the juvenile correction facility is so important because young people have completely messed up their life from their own decisions. Now someone else comes in, a golly influence, and goes, this is how you can get back on track. I'm not dealing with what you're dealing with, 
but that's a good thing because now I can show you what uh, the Bible says here. Some people think um, that you can't have counselors that aren't going through what you're going through. What they'll do a lot of times is I'll see people, um, young people especially, they'll be dealing with something, so they'll go find someone who's dealing with the same exact thing. And a lot of times they get someone who they agree with them. And you know what? All right, you know, you're, you're struggling with the same thing, so I'm going to go seek counsel from you. And it's like, no, go seek counsel. Go seek counsel from someone who's separated from the situation. If Esau had sought counsel about this, uh, obviously any person around there would have said, no, Esau, this is not wise to do. But he had to have what he wanted right away. So may we not give away what we have no matter what Satan offers us. Now Isaiah chapter 40 and then in verse 8. It tells us something that we can be sure of here. Isaiah 40 and verse 8. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. So the word of God, it can never be traded. What, how God tells us to live our life is the most important thing in the walk of a Christian. To see what God's word says, how God leads us day in and day out through the principles that we uncover every single day in his word is so important. And may it be a job or uh, some position else, elsewhere, um, money, a relationship, vehicles, things, toys, whatever it is. May we never take those things in exchange for God's word and how important it is to us. Tell the world to keep the pottage. That's what the whole point here is. Keep it. It's not worth it. The situation is never as bad as you think it is. Don't deal in absolutes, and don't be, don't be quick to rush to judgment, and I have to make a decision right here. I need, a, I, I, I need to decide right now, right now, right now. And a lot of times what we'll do is we will be our biggest enemy inside of our brain because we'll go, I've got to do something now. Why? Why do you have to? Esau, why do you have to, well, he's elevated and said, I'm, I'm about to die. But we know that's not the case at all. He lied to himself to convince himself that he needed the pottage. And then thus he hated what was already given to him. So tell the world to keep the pottage and we will keep the blessings that God has given us. We will not sell them away cheaply at all. That's what we have today. Thank you for tuning in. Let's pray and we'll be dismissed. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for our time together, Lord. Just a quick look here in Genesis chapter 25. Um, Lord, help us to, we see as Rebecca did with um, um, Isaac, Lord, help us to, uh, with Jacob, help us to love unconditionally. Help us never to um, have conditional love towards anyone or our family, our children. Father, and with, I, uh, with Esau here, Lord, we know he elevated his situation to make it more dire than it really was. And thus, he gave away the blessing that you had for him, Father. We pray that each and every person here will always seek counsel, Lord, whenever the situation is dire, Lord. Even just something to talk about, Father, if we, if we, a decision that might not be a huge decision. Father, I pray that we'll seek our, our brothers and sisters in Christ, Lord, for their perspective. Father, I pray we won't seek out people who will only agree with us, Lord, but seek spiritual counsel who will look through the lens of your word. I pray, Lord, for those who are gone out and about this week, Lord, that you'll be with them. Bless us as we prepare for Sunday. And I pray, Lord, for, I pray for Gene's family, Gene, Karen, Lord. He's with you today, and we praise you for that. I pray for Laura and Evan and the rest of the family, Lord, that you'll give them strength during this time. Be with us, Father, as we go throughout this week. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.